Hi puzzles and pieces, it's Jessica from Multiplicity and me, giving you the lived experience of DID. And today we're going to be talking about the very important topic of trauma. How much of it do you need to have a disorder like DID? So we'll be breaking it down today because there is a lot to squish in here. First, a brief glance into the window of tolerance theory. Second, what exactly constitutes trauma? Which we will define by the current understanding of ACEs. So these are adverse childhood experiences. Both of these topics probably need their own video, but we need to have an understanding of both of these things to answer the question at hand, how much trauma is enough for DID? And finally, we'll give a quick summary of everything and also talk a little bit about which ACEs that we've experienced that we feel has impacted us the most. As human beings, we are all unique individuals, which means we all have a different perception, reaction to and tolerance to stress and trauma. The window of tolerance is essentially how much we can personally cope with something that's traumatic. So why is it when someone experiences a car crash, for example, they may never be able to get on the road again, but somebody else who's been through an extremely similar car crash will just jump back in their car the next day. This is down to the weird and wonderful world of the window of tolerance. What dictates your current window is a mixture of genetic and environmental factors. Every person's window of tolerance will be unique to them. Some person's perception of trauma may be different from another person's perception of trauma, and therefore people may not necessarily feel that a certain type of trauma is severe enough but it's how your brain reacts that's important. And in childhood, how it soothed thereafter, because we learn our window of tolerance, our brain learns how to respond to situations by social cues from our caregivers. So it's not necessarily about the particular trauma you faced, it's quite literally how you felt about it. We all face different stresses in life and essentially the window of tolerance negates that you can cope when you have kind of a reaction that's between this tolerance right between this window and some of us are just more sensitive than others to this reaction so when we look at what exactly counts as traumatic we refer to the reactions as toxic stress and it can be mapped out like so typically when faced with some kind of threat or stressful situation your system goes into a higher level and you go into fight or flight mode this might include responses such as running away fighting or freezing then you come back down again rest relax and your body recovers. This is tolerable and can be positive. When exposed to chronic stresses or adverse childhood experiences, your body doesn't come back. For evolutionary reasons, it sets itself to a higher state of alert permanently. This is what we might refer to as toxic. That permanent higher state of alert has a lot of consequences. These experiences can alter our neural circuits which distinguish their situations or people as safe, dangerous or life-threatening. This means that these children and young people spend a significant amount of time in a state of what's known as hyperarousal, facing significant emotional distress, which adversely changes a young person's ability to regulate their emotions. As for types, well, the current adverse childhood experiences list looks a little like this. So you've got physical abuse, emotional abuse, sexual abuse, physical and emotional neglect, mental ill health. This is typically when there are parents or other adults within the home who have basically not been able to regulate their mental illness. Substance misuse, which may be where there are adults in the home with drug misuse or addiction problems, including alcoholism. Criminality, whereby parents or others who usually live in the same home are either in prison or probation. Domestic violence, which could be physical, psychological, sexual, financial, emotional abuse. And includes controlling and coercive behaviours. And separation, where either parents are separated or divorced, or one or both parents are dead. When parents separate, it's the way in which ha parents handle this situation and how they handle the aftermath that has a potentially traumatic impact on children and young people. Other traumas include living in care, where the child is looked after by the state or in a care setting or elsewhere, sometimes referred to as looked after children and young people, being criminally exploited, gang membership or bereavement, critical illness, being a young carer, prejudice and migration, 
Whilst we have provided examples of adverse childhood experiences, it is important to be aware that there could be other distressing events that do occur and a result in an overwhelming amount of stress that exceeds a child's ability to cope or deal with the emotions involved with that experience. 61% of the human race has faced at least one childhood trauma. Although it counts, I'm sure many people who don't consider themselves traumatized by this supposed ace that they have, look back on their childhoods and feel that this didn't bother or affect them. Again, it's all about that window of tolerance and that perception and reaction that we may have. Because sometimes life happens and children will sadly be faced with traumatic incidences or incidences that cause a lot of stress but how you deal with that as a caregiver is paramount. If you don't help soothe your child who's been through that toxic stress situation, the brain's alarm system will keep sounding a lot longer basically than it's supposed to, it'll just keep ringing. If you imagine like the alert system in the brain, it'll just keep going on. When you soothe them, that brings that down much quicker. So ultimately it can shape the way in which and how they cope. And if you had this kind of upbringing, I guess, where you weren't soothed very well in childhood, I am happy to declare that you can break the cycle. And I feel like it's very much about understanding exactly that to ensure that you can attach well and soothe your children when and if you choose to have any. The best part about today's video, if you wanted further information, you can access the ACES training completely free and even get a certificate at the end. So I'm really encouraging everyone and anyone to have a go. Psychoeducation is such a powerful tool and I really feel the more of us that are aware of that toxic stress and how it impacts the brain, the better. But in a nutshell, if a child is in situations where toxic stress is continually activated outside of their windows of tolerance and it isn't soothed, that trauma is going to shape how the brain therefore copes in another situation where something similar may happen again or remind that child of that situation. That's essentially provoking that PTSD reaction. It shapes how the brain copes and ultimately dissociative disorders are a coping mechanism. So when a child can't fight or can't flight, they may dissociate as a method of self-soothing and protection. And it's a natural and quite a remarkable response, our brain's defense, I guess, to survival. So when we think about that severe and repeated trauma, I guess my rebuttal would be what constitutes as severe, what constitutes as repeated? Because according to the ACEs research, all the trauma that you've been informed about today is a type of trauma. But again, if we're kind of rationalizing from these studies what severe may constitute as, the studies show that those with four or more ACEs are twice as likely basically to have negative outcomes and responses than those with less than four, which depending on the population that you measure is between nine and 14% of us. Quite a lot really, right? Like one in 10? One in 10 of us have had four or more toxic stresses. Again, some people may be affected by this quite severely and other people may not be affected much at all. And again, that goes back to our window of tolerance. And a couple more points, I'm gonna rush up really quick. Very lastly, two more important things. So one, there is no single age that there is a cutoff point for DID. I used to think that in my older videos when I first started, but there's actually not. Although we can, again, put a lot of research into the fact that it's very much extremely likely to happen whilst the brain is still in development. And the studies to test what age would be a cutoff point to have DID are quite frankly unethical and wouldn't be allowed to happen. So we can't test what age is, you know, enough. But we can say the evidence strongly suggests that the cutoff point to have DID is when the brain is still in development. And finally, I get a question a lot about, you know, what's your trauma? What have you been through? Please don't ask that question. Like, I don't mind it, I'm used to it now, but it generally, like, you wouldn't ask someone what trauma they've been through. But as you can see by the ACEs that I pointed out today, it may not be so straightforward. I am in the category of having four or more ACEs in my childhood, but I feel what impacted me the most was the CSA that I experienced. Um, you know, I wasn't soothed or comforted aftermath and it's had a major impact on how I deal and navigate with intimacy and how I feel about my own body. And it's really hindered me in so many ways that through therapy, I'm now starting to understand and see for myself. But again, this is not the trauma Olympics. So when someone tells you that they have a trauma related disorder, or even to them, that, that person's experienced something traumatic, so it may not even be in regards to DID, just remember that your perception of how bad that 
person's trauma was is irrelevant. It's how their brain reacted as a consequence to those experiences, as a consequence to the to that toxic stress. And that form of stress that can be triggered repeatedly, causing the brain to react over and over again, maybe merely at the thought of thinking about it, causes our brains to rely on survival coping mechanisms, like dissociation, for example. Anyway, that was a ridiculously long video. And there's just so much more that we can talk about on ACEs and the impact of trauma. So well done on becoming more educated. I'm so proud of you guys. And remember that each part of you deserves self-love, self-care and compassion. And remember that you can actually visit the website that I've listed here in the link below to complete a training program essentially so you can have a more of a background about ACEs and how that happens. And if you are comfortable sharing, why not also take the ACEs test and tell us how many ACEs that you have below? Did it surprise you in any way? Do you feel it's accurate? But of course, as always, be mindful to practice self-care as obviously this may cause some people to process and reflect on the past if those situations are coming up. So remember, if you feel that your trauma was enough, it was enough. And finally, please don't forget to follow our socials, which are Instagram, Twitter, Facebook, and Patreon. And we wish you guys a lovely, happy new year.